Hello and welcome to this electrical science training video. In this video we're going to answer a question from a viewer. Now this question has not come in from an electrician, it's actually come in from a friend of mine who's currently training to be an audiologist uh, and this question has come up, I think it's the kind of course that could well lead on to uh, people looking at designing hearing aids and things like that. So it's likely that my friend will never use this information after they've used it the first time but it's a really good electrical science question and it's one uh, that I'm keen to help uh, this person to answer. Uh, what I've done, I've changed the values that are in the question. So I'm going to show you how you would answer it with the values that are here. And then when you come to do the exam, you'll be able to use your individual values that you've been given in order to figure out what the answer should be. So uh, can't be accused of cheating. So let's have a look at the question. Uh, it's actually a really good electrical question. What is the resistance value in ohms for the voltage and current intensity presented below? And then you're given a couple of values down here. V is 24 volts and I is 3000 milliamps. And then the second part of the question is how many electrons flow through the circuit in four seconds? And we've got that helpful reminder, one electron carries a negative charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So let's try and start to unravel this question. Okay, so the first part of the question, which is in purple, so we'll answer it in purple, uh, is really quite straightforward. So we're going to try and figure out what the resistance is for this circuit. So uh, we're trying to find resistance. Uh, so that's what we're aiming for to start with. We want to know what the resistance of the circuit is. And we've got uh, two values for voltage and current. Now, hopefully when you're seeing those three units all grouped together, they're trying to find one of them. Your mind instantly goes to the formula that we're going to need for this. And that is the formula for Ohm's law. If you don't know what Ohm's law is and you'd like to know a little bit more about it, please go and check out the series of videos that I've made on that. But what we're going to do here is we're going to start off by saying, right, remember Ohm's law. Uh, now, I always taught my learners to remember Ohm's law like this, so we'll, uh, we'll answer this in this space. We say I equals V over R, and I used to get them to chant that over and over again until it lodged into their brain. The reason I like it remembered this way is that this is actually what happens in the real world. We take a resistance or a load and we apply a voltage to it, and that means that a current flows through the circuit to feed that load. So the current that flows is dependent on the voltage and the resistance that it is applied to. However, in this case, we're not looking to find out what I is because we've already been given that information. We're trying to figure out what R is. We want to know what the resistance of the circuit is. So I think kind of the thinking behind this is that this might be a question that relates to if you're designing a hearing aid or something like that uh, and how much uh, current it might draw. It's a pretty beefy hearing aid if it's got a 24 volt battery and three amps flowing through it. Uh, but that's kind of what I think it relates to. So uh, what we need to do to find resistance in this case, we need to rearrange this formula to make R the subject. Now again, we could go through loads of stages showing you how to transpose this, but I want to keep it fairly simple in this case. So we're just going to jump straight to the fact that if you want to figure out what R is, you can just swap these two letters straight over. So you're going to end up with this formula. R is equal to V divided by I. So we've just swapped those two over uh, and we've now found that uh, R is the subject. And to find that, we're going to do the voltage divided by the current. Now, this next stage is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're just going to do voltage divided by current. But... The examiner has put a question in here to try and trip you up. So we've got 24 volts, so the V is 24. We figured that out over here. We were given this information and we're going to divide that by, and immediately brain will go, right, we need to find I, and we're told here that I is 3000 milliamps, so I'm going to write 3000 under there. That would be a mistake because this here is not measured in millivolts, it's just measured in volts, and this is bit measured in milliamps, which means if you did 24 divided by 3000, you're going to get the wrong answer, and you're going to be out by a factor of a thousand, which is a pretty massive mistake to make. However, your examiner has also made this a fairly straightforward conversion to do. We need to change this into amperes is going to be the easiest way of doing this. And you can see here we've got 3000, and then we've got milli, and remember milli means uh, thousandth. Okay, so we've got three thousand thousandths of an amp. So what that means is that actually we've got just three amps. So we don't actually need that big long tail on there. That's completely wasted. And all we need to know is we've got 24 divided by three. So this is not 3000 amperes. It's 3000 milliamperes, which is exactly the same amount of current 
as three amps. So it may be helpful to think of this as being a bit similar to millimeters. You've got a thousand millimeters in a meter. So you can express a length as being either a thousand millimeters or one meter. It's exactly the same distance, exactly the same length, just expressed in different ways. So 3000 milliamps is exactly the same as three amps just expressed in different ways. So 24 divided by three, hopefully we don't need a calculator for that one. So how many threes are there in 24? And we know of course that there are eight in there. So this uh, load, this connection uh, has eight ohms of resistance. Okay, so that's the Amiga symbol, which is the unit symbol for resistance. So R is equal to eight ohms. We've answered the first part of the question. We've found the resistance that's associated with that voltage and that current in a circuit. And just to clarify that a little further, I've just drawn the circuit down here, and you can see that what we've done is we've applied a voltage of 24 volts to a load, which we can represent with the symbol for a resistor. That voltage applied to that load has resulted in a current flow of 3000 milliamps or three amps, which has led us to the conclusion that this resistor must have a value of eight ohms. So there we go, we've found our value. So notice we've done the formula, we've done the transposition, we've volleyed some numbers in, and we've got to the right answer. So again, if an exam says show you working out, that's not asking you to do work for the sake of it. What it's actually doing is giving you an opportunity to get some more points. So if you demonstrate some knowledge throughout this, but you get the wrong answer or you put the wrong number in along the way, you can still get some points if you've kind of demonstrated that you do understand what you're doing, you've just done a simple arithmetic error. Okay, now let's answer the second part of this question. So we've just partitioned this bit off so we don't get our numbers mixed up. Uh, now, what's quite nice about this question is the examiner's been quite kind because what they've done is they've given you a question here that you can answer even if you can't answer the first part or even if you get it wrong. We're not gonna have taken any information from uh, this part here into our second part of our answer. So that's not gonna throw us off if we've made a mistake. So, so thanks to our examiner for that one. Uh, so the question is, how many electrons flow through the circuit in four seconds? One electron carries a negative charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now, at this point, what we're thinking about is we're going from thinking about the amount of current that's going, the flow rate, okay, so the number of coulombs per second, and we're thinking uh, how many electrons are flowing. To be honest, this is a really weird question. I have never, in my electrical experience, come across a situation where you need to calculate the number of electrons flowing around a circuit. I think even some highly qualified electronic engineers might be a little bit baffled by this question, but I think the point is it's trying to just make you work through some numbers. So the first thing that we need to do is to figure out, if we're gonna figure out the number of electrons flowing around the circuit, mad question, we need to figure out what the charge in the circuit is, which is actually quite a good question. So let's do that. Now you may remember in a previous video, uh, we defined uh, current, uh, the ampere, as being one coulomb of charge flowing through a circuit in one second. So if you're a little bit baffled now about where this has come from, I equals Q over T, please go back and watch that video because it's going to help you to understand this. But basically what we've got here is the current in the circuit is equal to the charge in coulombs divided by the time in seconds. Now again, we're at the point where Look at what we know for this question. Do we know what the current in the circuit is? Well, yes, we do. We've already got that as 3000 milliampers or three amperes, as we just saw. Then we've also got uh, charge. Now, charge hasn't appeared anywhere in the question. We've got a little something to do with charge here, but we're not going to be able to use that yet. And we've also got T. The time is four seconds. So the first stage to answer in this question is to figure out what the charge in the circuit is going to be. And again, we need to rearrange the formula. Again, I'm not going to massive depths of how to do that here. We'll cover that in other videos. But the formula that we're actually going to need to answer this question is this. Q is equal to I times T. So we've got that formula. We've just rearranged it to make Q the subject on the left-hand side here. And that uh, rearranged formula gives us Q is equal to I times T. Now let's have a look at putting some numbers in here. So uh, we can swap the I out for uh, the current value. We know that the current value I is equal to 3000 milliamps, which is the same as three amperes. And then we're going to times that by the seconds that the current is flowing for. So the current of three amps flows for four seconds. So we've got three times four, and that's going to give us a value of Q. Sorry, I'll fill these 
in as I go now. So the value of Q, which represents the charge in coulombs or bunches of electrons, uh, which is going to be 12 coulombs. So remember, a coulomb is just a big bunch of electrons that we lump together in order to make it easier to do the maths. And we give that the uh, mathematical symbol Q for uh, quantity du charge, I think is the way uh, that gets defined. So the charge is 12 coulombs or 12 big bunches of electrons flow through that circuit when three amps flows for four seconds. So we're halfway through answering this part of the question. So let's move on and answer the rest of it. So to answer this last part of the question, we're just gonna change pen color in order to keep it all nice and separated for us. So we know that 12 coulombs flows through the circuit and we know that uh, 12 coulombs is 12 big bunches of electrons flowing around. So the question now is how many electrons are in those 12 big bunches? Now we could do this uh, a couple of ways. We could use some prior knowledge of how many electrons makes a coulomb. But what we're gonna do here is we can use this, this information. We've been told that one electron carries a negative charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So all we've actually got to do now now is think right if we've got 12 coulombs okay so again this is such a mad question that there is no unit for the number of electrons we're just trying to find the number of electrons but it will be equal to the total charge in the circuit so the total charge in the circuit divided by the charge per electron which kind of makes sense uh, because if we know how much charge each little individual electron has and we know the total charge, we can figure out what the total number of electrons is going to be. So all we've got to do is do the total charge of 12 divided by the charge per electron. And the charge per electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Okay, now this might be looking a bit weird to you. This times 10 to the minus 19 bit, what that does is it modifies this number and it explains that actually this value here is incredibly small. So basically what this is telling you to do is to move that decimal point 19 positions that way. So we're gonna have not point, not, 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 loads of noughts followed by 1.6. Now obviously, Trying to move that decimal point and rewrite this as a big long 0 0.000000 number is going to be a real pain. So we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you how to volley that straight into your calculator. So let's head over to Calculator Cam and have a look at that. Okay, so let's have a little look at this. So hopefully you've got a calculator that looks like this or similar. Uh, I'm using the Casio FX85 GTX. You might be using the 83 GTX, but they'll both work in the same way or hopefully a similar calculator. So first of all, let's turn it on. So our calculator is now on. And now all we've got to do is put the value in that we just figured out. So I'm gonna do it like this. We're gonna go 12 and then we're gonna say divided by, and the value that we needed to put into this formula was 1.6. Uh, so we put in 1.6 there. Now at this point we need to put in that weird times 10 to the minus 19 part. So we're just going to very simply do that by pressing this button here. So this is like a shortcut button. If we press that button, you'll see it brings up this little times 10. And then whatever we put in next, it will modify that times 10. So in this case, I always like to use this minus button to the minus and then we'll put in 19 like that. So there we've got our calculation, 12 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Now if we hit equals, we come up with this. Now we've got 7.5 times 10 to the power of 19. Let's volley that onto the board and we'll explain what that actually means. Okay, so we've come up with an answer of 7.5 times 10 to the power of 19. So what this means, notice we've not got a little minus in front of this now, we've just got the number 19. And what that means is that now the decimal point, instead of going 19 places that way, is gonna go 19 places that way. So this now becomes an absolutely massive number. It's enormous. So what we've actually got here is 7, 0.5 followed by sorry a seven a five followed by like 18 zeros so that's like 75 i don't know million 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 possibly i don't know it's anyway the point is it is a whole heap that is a huge number of electrons 
I don't know why they're asking this question. It's a very, very strange question, but that is the answer. The number of electrons that are flowing around this circuit in a period of, uh, what was it, four seconds? In a period of four seconds is 7.5 times 10 to the 19 electrons. A very strange question, but that is the answer, okay? So hopefully, based on what we've looked at here, and in a moment I'll step away from the camera so you can see it all laid out clearly for you, is the way to structure an answer to this question. So it won't be exactly the same as the question that you've sent in, uh, and it won't be, uh, you, so you won't be able to kind of just put this in as the answer because it will be wrong. But what you will be able to do now is have a little look at it and think, right, instead of 24, I've got X instead of 3000 milliamps, I've got Y. And then hopefully you'll be able to use this as a way of structuring your answer and putting your numbers in instead of my numbers and working your way through to the right answer. So I really hope that that's been helpful. Uh, and again, if anyone else is watching this and you think it's of value and you'd like to buy me a coffee to donate to the channel, you'll find the link in the description below. But as always, there's absolutely no pressure to do that because times are hard and I don't want anyone being left out of pocket. But all that remains in this video now is to say thank you very much for watching.